Have you ever wondered how you can keep data in sync between two different applications? You could try to construct something in Make or Zapier, but then you're really managing a series of one-way integrations. And then after a while, it becomes operationally expensive because you're tracking every single change made to that application and pushing that data through. Enter WhaleSync. This is a tool specifically designed to make two-way sync simple. They have a growing library of connectors, and they've got some really common use cases like using Airtable as a CMS for Webflow or using a CRM and connecting it to your no-code or database tools. Pricing is also quite a bit different as well. Instead of pricing based on individual updates, it's tracking the number of records that are kept in sync as opposed to each little change that happens. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. For our use case today, we're going to say that our sales data lives inside of our CRM in HubSpot. But we also have a project management team living inside of Airtable, and so we want to take our companies and our contacts that we have in HubSpot and make sure that they're accessible in Airtable as well. Now, to make this even easier, WhaleSync has something called template packs that they've put together. So instead of having to do all the mapping yourself, you can find the template pack you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for HubSpot, manage your HubSpot marketing from Airtable. This is exactly what we need. Now, in many common use cases, you've got one application that's more opinionated. It has a set of pre-configured fields, and then you have another application that's less opinionated, like Airtable. So our next step is going to be to copy an Airtable base that has all of the fields, all of the metadata that we have coming from HubSpot. Once you click to open that template, then you'll see this blank base with several different tables, and you're going to want to make a copy of this that you can use. Once you've made a copy, then you're ready to get started with WhaleSync. WhaleSync has a similar nomenclature to Airtable. They call them bases to get started. So let's create a new one, and we'll pick our first app. This will be HubSpot. We'll want to make sure to authenticate tell it which account to use, and we can save our connection. Then we'll want to choose Airtable and authorize it. Now it's going to ask for a base sharing link. It's using this to basically identify the base that we're choosing. So come back into your base and go to share, share publicly, and we can copy this link. And then we'll paste this into WhaleSync and click authorize. Next, we'll want to give access so we can add a base, choose the base, and grant access and save that connection. And now we get to the step where we want to map the tables. The nice thing about using these template packs is that it has suggestions of how to already map this so it knows the tables and the field mappings if you want to use that out of the box. Now remember, on their base level plan of $100 a month, you only get 10,000 records. So I wouldn't suggest taking this out of the box and saying, yeah, let's go ahead and sync everything because contacts and companies, that's one thing. But now imagine we're syncing over every single note or every single call that we have. That can be a ton of records. So let's go ahead and start deleting out the different tables that we don't care as much about. So now I'll have just the two tables that I want to map, my companies and my contacts. And you can see we have a really simple button here that indicates that we want this to be bi-directionally synced. We could indicate one way or the other if we want to, but in this case, we do want that bi-directionality. Next, let's map the fields. This is another place the template pack saves us a lot of time because these fields come already mapped. And again, we've got this indicator to show which way that data is going. Most of the time, it's going to be bi-directional as you see here, but there's going to be certain read-only fields that are going to be oftentimes from computed fields, something that would be in HubSpot. So we can scroll down and check out our fields. We could X these out if we want. It's really not going to cost us anything additional to keep them synced, so we'll keep most of them here. You'll see here that we have this indicator, and this is because we've chosen not to actually sync our deals. And so if we don't have our deals, then we can't have this field present so we can X this out. This is something I wish was actually productized in here is that if it knows that we're not mapping those tables, just let us have an option to say, clear out those fields. So I'll remove all the additional ones. And we'll do the same thing for contacts. And now we're ready to save our base. Now we have our WhaleSync base, it's created, and we can go ahead and enable it. An important thing to note is that two-way syncing is really powerful because we make changes in either system and it's pushing that data back and forth. So WhaleSync highly recommends that you're taking regular backups of your data in case there's some kind of issue as it's syncing the data back and forth. We'll check this off and turn syncing on. Now back on our dashboard, we're going to see this indicator and as the data is coming over, it's going to watch for changes and then it's going to start writing that data into Airtable. And now it's starting to work its way through the list and write our data into the companies and contacts. 
and now we have access to the data that we need from HubSpot inside of Airtable. Now you can see from this template, that there's several unused fields, but we also have lots of data if you're scrolling through here. And that's because of some of the technology that HubSpot has to actually recognize information about those companies. So as you can scroll through, you'll see that there's a lot of different information that we have inside of this table. And so I definitely encourage you then to create your own views and in these views, you could do things like choose your own fields that you want to hide and just have that subset of fields so that you can see the data in front of you that's most important. What's really cool here, if we're on contacts, you can see that because we've actually synced the companies, now we have access to the companies themselves as those linked records. So we've got Tim Cook at Apple and we've got the company and we can actually drill in and open up that respective company record. Inside of WhaleSync, if there were issues that happened up during that sync, we can click and see that on issues. And then we can also see logs of all the data that was synced down to the record level. So we could open up and see what changes were made, what's the old data and what's the new data inside of our logs. And we can open these side by side to see what it looks like if we make a change on either side. Let's change Tim's name here to Steve instead of Tim. And you can see the data has now updated the first name inside of Airtable. Or in Airtable, if we change this back to Tim, now we can see the data is refreshed inside of HubSpot as well. So that's how easy it is to get set up with WhaleSync to two-way sync your data. One feature that I'm looking forward to that they're working on hard this quarter is the ability to take a certain filtered subset of data to sync between both systems. So imagine if we didn't want our project management team in Airtable to have access to all the companies and contacts that we're working with on a sales side in HubSpot. We could say only leads that have closed that are now turning into projects we want to take that list, filter it by status, and only sync those records. So the next time you're looking to have true two-way synchronization between your data, think of WhaleSync. And if you have any questions about your own automation, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 